Hello everyone, today we'll continue learning request fiber in Python and today we'll talk about POST and PUT requests. So let's start. But before we start that video, I recommend you subscribing to my Telegram channel. You will find lots of materials, modules, libraries, examples and tasks on Python in my Telegram channel. Also, I post all the announcements there. So if you want to understand what will happen to the channel in the near future, you can go here. And I respond to comments much faster than I do it on YouTube. So subscribe to my Telegram channel, link in the description down below. If you haven't seen the last video about or the first video about request fiber, then you should watch it. But what are the gist of the last video? I talked about get method in requests. Get method is the method that is used in HTTP. And a lot of HTTP programs use CRUD. So what is CRUD? It's create, read, update, delete. Now we know how to read, because get reads the information, it gets the information. But we do not know how to create, update and delete. About deletion of the information, I'll talk in the next video, but today I need to talk about creation and update methods of our information in HTTP. So how we can do it in HTTP and requests? How we can do it? We can do it by using post and put methods. Well, actually, I want to tell you that in some scenarios, you can work with only get and post methods. So get to get results and post to delete, um, I don't know, update and do all these things. But that was the right method 10 years ago. And I don't really know if somebody does not use put, delete, I don't know, head and other methods today. Again, you should use get to read information, post to create information and put to update information. Again, get read, post create, put update. That's it. So today we'll talk about post and put because you already know about get. Let's import a request library. Let's do it. Import requests. Request like that. And then what I should do? I have a site website. You can find the link to it in the description. That website JSON placeholder to be called. And let's get some information from that website. So print requests dot get and website like that website. And then I just not I do not want to get the website, but I want to get um, like some information from the database of that website. And I want to get posts. So some posts on that website. Let's run. Again, it's a fake API that just helps you to learn requests, to understand requests and so on. As you can see, we receive response to 100. That means that everything is all right. But I need to use uh, JSON to see the content because again, we use JSON placeholder. If it would be an HTML page, I would use text inside instead of JSON. Okay, as you can see, I have user ID, ID, title and so on. And we have a list of posts. Oh no, we have how many? 100 posts. 100, yes, I think it's 100. Um, yeah, descriptions are really big, but around 100 posts in our database. And what I should do? I want to create a new post. Let's go to the ID 100, 100 is the last ID. And I want to create post 101. So what I need for my post? Let's get the first one. So posts one, that's REST API and we'll talk about it. And again, REST's API is another thing that uses read, create, update, delete. Okay, let's run it. And yeah, here we have our first post. So user ID, ID, title, and body. That's all we need. And that's a template for post and we'll create our new post right now. How we can do it? We can do it by using requests.post. So again, post, it's a request that is a request method that is used to create information. And let's create our information. So post. And we need to post to that website, but not to post one because um, in, in uh, not in CRUD, but in REST API, when you create an information, for example, you create a user, you need to use users right here. But when you create an information po po for posts, you need to create posts. Because if I want to use posts one, that means that I need to update information on um, the post that has ID one, but that don't, the thing that I want to do. I want to create a new post and because of that I do request to that website to just posts and slash. So website we request post website and what we need to provide right here. Now it's just I will say save it to response because 
request is what we as a client do, but response is what the server sends back to our to us. Let's run print print response dot text. We can use text, but JSON is better because we use JSON right here. So as you can see, text ID 101. That's our new post. But what you can see, you can see that we have no title, no user ID, no body. We have nothing. We have only ID, the ID of our post. And how we can provide some information to create a new post, to authorize, for example, on the website, we will authorize in the next video. How we can do it? We can do it by using comma and then data. Data, it's the data that you provide with your post request. So for example, when you re register on a website, you provide your username, your email, and all of that email, or all of that information goes to post request and you use data. Uh, so that data re represents the form you're putting your information in. So for example, you put your username, user name, and then you put, for example, you know, Andrew, and so on. So that's the data you sent to the web server. In the request, it's called data. What we should do here? Let's first of all write our user ID. So user ID, it's not the ID of the post. It's the ID of the user who wrote that post. For example, tw um, 12. Then let's write title. Title, my new post. And then let's write, uh, for example, body. Body as, hello, this is body. Let's run, and as you can see, now what we receive here. We receive user ID as 12, title as my new post, body as hello, that's body, and ID as 101. So what we did here, we made a request, a post request to that website, and we created a post. Because when you use REST API, and you have posts slash, or any resource slash, and you use post request on them, that means that you create information, and all no post creates information in every system. Okay, request post, website, and then we provide data. As the data, we provide user ID, title, my new post, and body. And after that, our web servers, our website will create a new entity in its database. That's actually it. But as you can see, we provide user ID as 12 right here. But when we receive information back in the response, we can see user ID as 12 in, um, in these things, as a string. Why? Because JSON placeholder, it's a fake API. In the future, we'll create our server. I'll make another video on sockets, for example, and we'll create a server that works with HTTP. So we'll be able to make these requests and so on. But now we use reg or fake REST API. And because of that, what you can see is mm, JSON, which is returned back to us because JSON placeholder. And uh, in JSON, I think that uh, that website just translates everything in strings. In, except for the ID, because yeah, that's how it works. But we use JSON, and a lot of systems nowadays use JSON. That's my favorite method of trans transferring the information from one point to another. And how we can use JSON in post request? Well, actually, you can use either di data or JSON. So what is JSON and why we have data and JSON? Data is a simple data that is sent with your request post. but if you want your data to be encoded to JSON, what you can do is use JSON. And after that, the object you provide after equal sign is encoded to JSON inside of request post. So what we can do actually is provide data and then import the JSON library and write JSON dumps for that object. But that's not convenient for, for us as the users. And because of that, we can provide JSON right here and put any object that can be translated to JSON. Actually, we will not receive any different result because, yeah, again, that's the result. But as you can see, we receive different results. Result, I was wrong. We receive 12 as uh, an integer because now we sent JSON. And I think it's better for that API because it's a JSON API. But when we sent data, we sent data with raw post request. So yeah, as you can see, JSON is better in that case. But what's the potential problem with your D JSON? What if you provide, for example, files, files, and you provide these files as a, as a set. One dot JPEG, for example, and then two dot PDF, and so on. Now let's run, and we will receive an error. 
Why? Because object of the type set is not JSON serializable. If you don't understand JSON and you want to update or improve your knowledge, then you can watch my other video. I think it popped up right here about JSON. I told you what's, what's that error and how to avoid it. So yeah, but as you can see, we really encode to JSON because when I use JSON, it says that it's not JSON serializable. But what will happen if I use data? Well, actually, as you can see, everything's all right. But we still send that information using our request post and we still receive JSON back. So as you can see, in JSON, what we receive is files as a list. That does not mean that data is better. That means that data does not encode your data into JSON, but JSON does that. So yeah, that's the method of creating information on your web servers. So post to create an information, and if you have JSON, so if you need to provide JSON information, then you put JSON right here. But if you need to provide raw data with post, then you put data. Actually, that's almost everything I wanted to tell you about request post. In the future video, we'll authorize on the website and we'll see it in the real work. But now what I want to do is tell you about put. How to update information. Put is the thing that we can use. So put, it's a method of updating information. Put is just a request as get and post are. And put updates your information on a website. So now let's run our, our program and we will see. I just translate put, or I changed put right here. As you can see, we received nothing. Okay, now I know why we received nothing. Now, now let's print okay right here. So response okay. I was told in the comments that we cannot use status code. Uh, status code is HTTP code that shows you what's an error, but we can use response okay. So if the response is okay, that, then that means that everything is okay with your code. And actually response okay is better. Why? Because in HTTP codes, we have almost 100 codes for, for the word okay. So we have 200, 201, 202, and so on because all the codes from 200 to 300 mean OK, like that. So response OK is better. And let's run our code now, response OK, and it will say false, because something is not all right with our put request. Let's write response.reason. Response.reason shows why, shows you like an error, a description of an error. False, not found. Why it is not found? Well, actually, because we don't provide the ID. What is an ID? An ID not of the user who wrote that post, but of the actual post, because we update nothing. We update like raw posts, and we can update like, like the whole database of the posts. We use put to update only one resource uh, almost all the time. And because of that, I need to put one right here. So I will update the first post in our database. Let's run it now, and we will see that true. So response okay, everything is okay, and response reason okay. That's great, but if we'll go to response status code and response okay, let's write it right here, response okay, I think it will tell me 201, or no, just 200, okay. As you can see, response okay is much more better than just using raw status code, because response okay shows that you can um, really, uh, that you can, uh, there are lots of status codes and response okay is just better, <laughs> trust me, okay. Then what I should do, let's write our text. So response.txt, let's write it. And what we'll see, we'll see that. User ID 12, title my new post, body, hello, this is body, files and ID as one. Because I changed the first post right here. I wrote one and because of that, the first post is changed. Let's run it again. And now the 10th post will be changed. That's how we can change our information. That's great. What I want to do now, now I'll remove title. And I'll remove user ID, and I'll change I'll change values of I'll change body and files of the post ten. Let's run it now, but we'll see not the result we wanted to see. We cannot see user ID and title. Why? Because we just want to update body and files. For example, you wrote uh, "Hello, this is body" like that, and you need to remove that information. But you don't need to remove user ID and I don't know ID of the post, title, and all the other fields. Well, actually, what request put does. Request put, it's, it does not change the values that you provide in data. It gets all the values from here, creates a new resource 
a new post in our case and changes that resource that entity in database so you had for example post 10 and you had title um, body user id a lot of files but then you provide a request put with that data and new post with only that data you provided in your put request is created and you change your new post to the old post in your database so as you can see we miss some information and yeah that's how update works it just changes the information in your database it does not it changes the whole entity the whole row the whole record in your database it does not changes like the whole the fields you choose okay and uh, in the future video i will talk about patch that helps to avoid that problem patch request but now i think that's it about uh, put request well yeah we don't have json right here and uh, yeah so get reads information post creates information and you can use json and data and put it's the qu the request that updates information so thank you and good luck mm -hmm.